Hi everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I will be making hydrogen gas. I'll show you how to make a hydrogen generator um, so we can use hydrogen in upcoming experiments. And uh, also because hydrogen is a flammable gas that's lighter than air and it's a bit fun to play with in the form of uh, balloons and bags and things like that. Uh, if you're taking proper safety precautions, of course, that's my disclaimer. Anyway, the basic hydrogen generator is very simple. It involves a metal and an acid. Uh, the metal attacks the acid and forms the metal salt and hydrogen gas. Now, metals can be anything, basically uh, magnesium, iron, tin, aluminum, sodium, copper, calcium, lithium, whatever you want, and acids are pretty much limitless as well. I've got mineral acids listed here, like uh, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric, nitric, but uh, also things like acetic acid would even work. It's just a matter of how well. Now, um, the stronger, or I guess the higher the reactivity of the metal, the faster the hydrogen will be produced, and the more vigorous the reaction between the metal and the acid will be. So, uh, you got to be careful sometimes. Also, some of these acids are volatile, like HCl. So if you choose to use something like aluminum and HCl, you'll have a very fast reaction, no doubt, which is actually more controllable than a slow reaction. I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, the HCl is volatile and will vaporize off of the reaction, and you'll end up having to clean the hydrogen stream of HCl so you don't contaminate your end use of hydrogen with uh, hydrogen chloride. You can also use the slow reaction between something like iron and sulfuric acid. You don't have to worry about any of the sulfuric acid vaporizing because it has such a high boiling point, but uh, the reaction between the two is actually pretty slow, and you'll need to heat the reaction in order to get it going. But that said, after you heat the reaction, it'll start going and then it will self-accelerate. So you need to constantly monitor that and you know heat it and cool it with a bowl of water or something. It becomes a real pain in the butt sometimes, so I don't really recommend methods using not really reactive metals. Also, you need to watch out for uh, oxidizing acids, like uh, nitric acid, for instance. If you use nitric acid and copper, yes, you'll produce hydrogen, but you'll also produce nitrogen oxides, which will mess up your reaction, probably. I don't know, maybe you want a mixture of the two, but either way, um, generally not a good idea to use oxidizing acids or uh, highly reducing metals like that. Anyway, uh, so my favorite reaction is, is between uh, hydrochloric acid and aluminum, simply because they're so easy to make. Now, if you've ever seen people react uh, aluminum foil with a toilet bowl cleaner in a bottle to make a sort of bomb, uh, the works bomb as they're called around here, you'll know that uh, the production of hydrogen is quite vigorous from that reaction. Now, aluminum metal is easy to get. Of course, you can just get aluminum foil. It's better than having to, say, <laughs> find lithium, which you'd never use lithium in a hydrogen generator, honestly. That's a stupid idea. Really expensive, but uh, aluminum is easy to find. Obviously, a foil, uh, or you can get like magnesium turnings or something, whatever you want. And uh, hydrochloric acid is also one of the cheapest acids you can purchase. It's uh, like six bucks for a gallon of the 31.45% at my hardware store. So uh, it's cheap, but also remember it has the volatility problem, which just means we need to set up a base scrubber to scrub the acid out of the hydrogen gas stream when we're done. So anyway, I like this reaction because it's pretty much immediate between the aluminum and the HCl, especially once the aluminum loses its oxide layer, and we'll get into that uh, during the generation process. But uh, without further ado, I guess I'll shut up now. Let's, uh, let's go to the lab and uh, make some hydrogen, and we'll have some fun with that. I'll start by just weighing this uh, piece of aluminum foil. I'll fold it a couple of times and weigh it to find it weighs about 4.3 grams, uh, and then I'll proceed to cut it into confetti and add it to this flask. I'll then set up the hydrogen generator, which simply consists of the flask of aluminum and a pressure equalizing addition funnel. This is a 250, it's the smallest I have, so it'll, it'll have to do. Uh, and this will contain the hydrochloric acid that we'll be using to drip onto the foil. Now make sure your stopcock is well greased, but uh, here's another tip. When you're greasing the stopcock, make sure that uh, the hole is clear, because sometimes if that fills with grease, you'll have problems. Obviously, you won't be able to flow any liquid through it. So we'll stick that in and uh, make sure the stopcock is closed, all right? Amateur mistake, don't do it. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and fill this with hydrochloric acid, uh, the corresponding amount to the foil in here. Uh, to react the full 4.3 grams of aluminum, we're going to need 69.6 grams of 29% HCl. So let me go weigh that out. Ta-da! Okay, let's load it into the uh, pressure equalizing funnel here. Also, I'm going to turn on the fan before I before it starts burning my eyes.
All right, so I've got the rest of the generator set up. You see we've got the aluminum here in the bottom of the flask, the hydrochloric acid charge here in the pressure equalizing addition funnel, the gas takeoff on the top of that, where the hydrogen comes around this tube, and then it's led to a gas washing bottle, and uh, this contains a solution of sodium, uh, sodium carbonate, which is going to react with any of the hydrochloric acid that may have come through the line, uh, because remember HCl is volatile and the reaction gets hot, and so uh, that will effectively wash the HCl from the gas stream, and then of course after that we could dry it or something like that, but since we're just playing with the hydrogen uh, today anyway, we're, uh, I'm not going to bother doing that. And right now the exit of the gas wash bottle is just simply venting to the fume hood, and uh, we can do some stuff with it then. So let's, uh, let's start with the HCl and uh, start generating some hydrogen. This reaction also has an induction period. It takes a second for this to, uh, to warm up and break through what I believe to be uh, not only the oxide layer on the aluminum that forms spontaneously, but uh, also a polymer layer which is on the aluminum foil. But uh, after a second or so, this will get going. Oops, yeah, and you can see the gas wash bottle already. We're producing some gas. And there we go. We are making hydrogen. And you can see what I mean by the HCl fumes. See the fog up there? That's what this gas washing bottle uh, aims to get rid of. And you can see how very controllable it is. Once you have that initial induction period, now I can just slowly start to drip uh, HCl in and it'll uh, it'll produce hydrogen at a very repeatable rate, so you know it's instantaneous. Which is good because obviously uh, in reactions where you want to produce hydrogen, uh, you'd like to have some degree of controllability, of course, due to its flammability. So first, of course, I'm purging the air out of this. And then uh, Eventually we'll have hydrogen coming out of there. Alright, so I'm going to try and make a hydrogen-filled sandwich baggie and see if it'll float. Now hydrogen is much more buoyant than air, so in fact it's more buoyant than helium even. So I don't know if it'll have enough buoyancy to lift the sandwich bag, but uh, there's only one way to find these things out, you know. Alright, so I'll hold it on there and I'll just start the flow of hydrogen. You see we're pretty handedly filling the bag. All right, the bag is uh, just about full of hydrogen, so I'll seal it off here. And now we have a Ziploc baggie with some hydrogen in it. It's not quite buoyant enough to float, which is unfortunate, but kind of expected. This bag is pretty heavy, but what we can do is light it on fire. So allow me to set up for that. We'll get a fuse and tape it to there, and we can take this outside and light it on fire. Of course, never do that in the lab, especially not with a hydrogen generator around because you will have problems. Uh, I guess I should say one of the things about hydrogen is that it has a very wide range of explosive limits with air. I don't recall it offhand, but it's something like 4% up to 90-something percent uh, mixtures with air are flammable. So that means if you uh, if you wanted to say light the hydrogen at the end of this tube here, you, have, you better be damn sure that you have 94% uh, of the air purged out of this entire apparatus, otherwise everything is going to explode. And that's not a good situation, of course. So uh, that's why hydrogen is so dangerous to work with. Not only is it lighter than air, but uh, and it will accumulate near the ceiling where the light fixtures and things like that are, but it's also extremely flammable in a wide range of concentrations with air. So uh, let's go burn some hydrogen. All right, I've got a sparkler attached to a piece of wood here and uh, my trusty torch to light it with, and I'm going to use this from a distance to poke the bag of hydrogen, which is sitting on the porch. So let's get to it. And apart from a small burning plastic fire, we have successfully uh, burnt the hydrogen in that bag, as you saw by the uh, little poof of flame. It looks as if it was probably mixed with a, uh, a bit of air, but uh, that's fine. Anyway, that kind of demonstrates the flammable properties of hydrogen. Well, that's about all I have on hydrogen. I've made this video sort of short and sweet because I, uh, I'm going to be using hydrogen in an upcoming video and I didn't want to have to detail this prep in that video. So now you know, and uh, also if you were just looking uh, to produce hydrogen only, then you can go ahead and follow this. So anyway, if you like this video and you want to see that upcoming video, please press the subscribe button and uh, the like button while you're at it. And uh, if you want to leave me a comment, go ahead. I'll try and answer as many as possible. And as always, Thank you very much for watching.